Good morning, Transformers. Good morning, good morning. So glad to have you join us today for, um, for this devotion. You know, it's, it's really amazing that we just get to spend time every morning before we get into a busy schedule. Some of us have to be at work. Some of us have to be at school. Whatever you have to be, we just bless God. We bless God because we just get this time to open up the scriptures, just get encouraged, get something to take us through the day, and in everything we just give God the glory. Before I continue, allow me to pray. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for an amazing morning that you've given us. Thank you for this day that, Lord, you have made, and we will choose to rejoice. We choose to be glad in it. Even as we look at uh, today's devotion, even as we briefly look at the scriptures and just hear what you're saying and just challenge ourselves to be better just to see you for who you are and just to uh, soak in your presence we pray that holy spirit may you guide us protect us lead us shape us sharpen us and in everything may glory and honor come back to you in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen so today even as we uh we continue with where we left off yesterday we started by um saying this this week we're just going to be talking about the god jesus presented the god jesus presented and just to uh say a bit about what we said yesterday is that Sometimes we have an idea of God. The idea of God that we have comes from culture sometimes. It comes from religion. Sometimes we speak so good Christianese, you know, like you know how to say, I'm blessed, you know, not today, Satan. You know, with things like this that we've picked in life, we've learned to say, you know, those words that will uh, get you into that spiritual uh, clique, you know, you, you come and say, ha, today. No, I, I don't know, you guys know, know what people say, you know. Just, we've learned some cultures, but sometimes these things do not accurately represent God. So this week we're just taking time to look at the God Jesus presented. Let's, let's for, for a moment just set down what uh, denominations and religions have presented about God and just take a minute and look at the God Jesus presented, the God that Jesus uh, presented. Jesus was an accurate representation of God. And today even as we just take time to look at the God Jesus present, I pray that you will uh, you just track with me for the next few minutes and then we'll... We, we, we can call it a day and then we'll see you tomorrow. So to, yesterday we talked about God is good. Today we are talking about God is trustworthy. And our scripture comes from Matthew chapter 6 uh, from 9 to 13. It's very familiar. It's the Lord's Prayer. You know, throughout the entire time the disciples were with Jesus, they only got to ask him one question. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. That's what, Je that's what they asked him. And Jesus graciously gave them the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer, we, we talk about it. We pray it. Some of us pray it every day. We pray it in church. We pray it in school. We pray it everywhere. But even today as we look at God is trustworthy, let's just pick that Lord's Prayer and then pick the attributes of God. Uh, and just like yesterday, we look at a false narrative and then we're going to look at the Jesus narrative of who God is. Amen? So Matthew 6, 9, 13, the Bible says, this then is how you should pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Uh, and then, yeah, for that is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So when we, when we look at this prayer, it's such an amazing prayer. We, we, we learn this prayer in Sunday school. We learn this prayer in school. We talk about it. You know, if you don't know how to pray, that's a go-to prayer. But most times, we really don't think about it. Because some of these things, we can get it right on a quiz. On a quiz, yes, one time, I got it. Yeah, like, can you pray the Lord's Prayer? Yes. But we rarely just take time just to meditate on the words of the Lord's Prayer. And see, the, today we're going to look at God is trustworthy. And just dive into it and just look at what God is saying and, and how God is being presented by Jesus in this prayer. That even as we pray, we can just take time, break it line by line and just look at it. So what are the false narratives that we have? The first false narrative is just plain. God is not trustworthy. Well, people don't say it with their mouth. Most people wouldn't say to their mouth, yeah, God is not trustworthy. They wouldn't say that. But what people would say, would, uh, their actions would just make you feel like, man, your words are not saying it, but your actions are shouting. Your actions are shouting. 
faced with the tough times, people make decisions which should be contrary to what they say. I have been there before. I've been there before. When you feel cornered sometimes, you, you have this urge to, to, to go against your words. You know, in that very moment, it makes sense to, you know, ditch God for a minute. You know, kind of like Peter when he was denying Jesus. You know, that's... It's an interesting turn of events. You know the right thing. You've seen the right thing. You've experienced the right thing. But your actions sometimes, kidogo nika zina, short wire, nika kidogo zina kuruka. You know, it, it happens. So that's the first false narrative, that God is not trustworthy. When I was young, um, I, I told you guys yesterday that I, I grew up through the 90s. I'm a typical millennial. Mimi, uh, if you put the litmus paper for millennials, I am perfect. My pH is just, you know, perfect. So when when uh, when gr- when I was growing up in the 90s and the 2000s, I remember walking late at night uh, with my dad. I have never been so comfortable walking at night like that. It was dark. I don't even think where we used to live there were good lights, but I kid you not, walking with my dad, that was the safest. Until I grew up. And then I realized he was very scared. I was not scared because I was with him, but he was scared because he had no one else to walk with. And that's the same thing about God. I trusted, I just trusted that because he's here, he's, everything is okay. But for him, he was shaken, you know, he was maybe like somebody might pop out of the bush, you know, like anything could have happened. But I just trusted knowing that he's there. When, when I know he's there, I could rest. So the first false narrative is that God is not trustworthy. And he's not trustworthy because sometimes we don't feel him there. And also the same thing is from our bringing, we've learned to fear God. We have learned to have this uh, picture of God that one day brimstone fire itanguka mtaona moto. You know, like like we have this notion that God will punish us one day in such a way we'll, we've never seen. You know, like. He's good until that moment we turn bad. When we turn and just do something off, cheat in an exam or do whatever, God switches up on us. And that's a notion a lot of people have come up with. And, and sometimes when we can't feel God, maybe we can't feel the supernatural, we can't feel him maybe, sometimes what that does to us is we start thinking, ah, God just uh, called it quits on me. And, and we can't trust him because when we can't feel him, we can't rely on him. And that's a false narrative. Another false narrative that has been propagated, especially with culture, about our God being trustworthy, is that God punishes us severely. Like, I did not get that uh, thing that I've been working for because God deems me less worthy. No, 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 friends, that's not the, that's not the God that Jesus preached. But then let's analyze the, the, uh, the prayer that we pray today. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Our cities in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who, uh, who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That's, that's that prayer. That's, that's what we've been looking at today from the book of Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9 to 13. And what do we see? What's the Jesus narrative? What's the Jesus narrative? Our narrative, of course, that Jesus is not... Tra- let's put that aside and let's see how, God, how Jesus presents God. This is how Jesus presents God. He says... God, first of all, our Father. He says God as a Father. First we learn that God is near. He's our Father in heaven. In, in the cosmology back then, uh, when they talked about heaven, they talked about the atmosphere, some, something near. It wasn't like a far in the sky, something. It was our Father who was in heaven. He's around. He's close to us. And, and you notice that he referred to him as Father? He, he referred to him as father. First of all, Jesus presents God as a father. The second thing we see is that Jesus presents God as holy. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. That God is holy. That God is holy. What that means is that uh, holiness has to do with purity. Jesus teaching us that there is nothing bad about God and God can neither sin or participate in evil. And that's the God Jesus is presenting to us. Jesus is also presenting to us that God is the king. Your kingdom come, your will be done on other cities in heaven. Kings have power. Kings uh, have power even uh, over, over subjects and over kingdoms. And our God is the king of kings. Your kingdom come, your will be done. But up to that point, we don't see anything relatable with God. We just see him as far. But then from there, when we look at the, uh, we look at the fourth thing, we learn that God 
cares for us. He has, he has caring attributes for us. The Bible says, give us our daily bread. You can trust him because even Jesus trusted God that he can give us our daily bread. He can give you a daily bread. You know, sometimes maybe if, you, if you've ever uh, done babysitting or you've ever had some taking care of small kids, sometimes when they're hungry, they come, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I need food, I need food. Sometimes you just, shut up. Have you died because of hunger? You're like, no, I've not died. Then relax because I will take care of you. And that's the God Jesus is presenting. That's the God Jesus is presenting. Hey, maybe you are, your expression to him might not be as artful. It might not be very poetic. But one thing that Jesus says is that God will provide for you. Give us today our daily bread. He's so close that he wants to. You know, God is so powerful that he can. He's so caring that he wants to. The other thing we see about God is that uh, God is one who forgives our trespasses. Uh, at the heart of God is the desire to, to forgive and to give. You see, God loves even more than we long to be forgiven. In a, uh, in a word, our Father pardons. You know what that means? Sometimes when we feel like we're distant from God, maybe we've done something that would make us feel away from God. Jesus says, the, the God I'm presenting to you is a God who wants to forgive you even more than you want to be forgiven, even more than you feel worthy to be forgiven. That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. That's the God Jesus is presenting. He's presenting a God who will pardon you. And that is the Jesus narrative. The false narrative will tell you that God will punish you, but the God Jesus is presenting, the God Jesus is bringing out is a God who loves you and he wants to, he wants to pardon you. The Bible says no matter, a, a righteous man can fall seven times, but he will still stand strong. That's the God Jesus is presenting. That is the God Jesus is presenting. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. The other thing we learn from the Lord's Prayer is that God rescues us from trials and evil. He says, do not bring us into a time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. God is present and powerful because he longs to protect us. Did you get that? He longs to protect us. I would say that, and my guess would be, most people would go like, I don't think so. Well, it's because sometimes we have grown up with an earthly father and how he's modeled fatherhood, we take that and project it to God. Sometimes it's inevitable for us to project how our father behaves and we now start projecting that to God. Maybe your father was harsh, so you start thinking that God is harsh. Your father was unforgiving, you start thinking that God is unforgiving. Maybe not even just your father, but a male figure in your life or an authority figure, even your mother or just someone who was an authority figure in your life. Life. They became harsh and loving. They became very stingy. Maybe they will, they would not allow you. They they uh, they they just you, you. Maybe you're suffering from some sort of trauma. You know what the Bible says. Uh, you know what God. Uh, the, our Lord's prayer says, no, 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 that's not God. That's not the projection that Jesus is saying. God is all loving. God is all caring. God is all. He's all good. He is trustworthy. And that's what we're talking about today. When you read the, uh, when you read the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 5, you see uh, that God is caring. You see that God is caring. He is caring. You see, Jesus says our Father is nearby. If I was to summarize that, he says our Father is nearby. He's holy, he's powerful, he's caring, he's forgiving, and he's our protector. These attributes provide a strong image of who God is, and we can trust in him. If you look at these six attributes, if you look at these six attributes, this should be projected to our uh, to earthly men. This is how we model fatherhood. We look at these six attributes of God and we try to pattern our lives in line with that with the help of the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ who is in us. That God is trustworthy because of these six attributes. God's fatherhood must define what human fatherhood ought to look like and not the reverse. And that's just true. Friends, God is loving. God wants to provide for you. He is trustworthy. And sometimes they say trust the process. And you know what I would add there? Trust the one who's taking you through the process. Trust Jesus. If Jesus believes that God is worthy, if Jesus believes that God is trustworthy, friends, you can hope in Jesus because Jesus knows Jesus has been with God through eternity. He's been there to the foundations of the world. You can trust in Jesus. And this is the God Jesus is presenting, that God is trustworthy. He is loving. He's all-powerful. He's all, he's, 
He's all in all mighty. And that's the God Jesus is presenting. As you go through your day to day, may you walk in that revelation that he's all loving, all powerful. He wants to protect you. That our Father who is in heaven, he is holy. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on other cities in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My name is Oseka, and I hope to see you tomorrow as we continue looking at the God Jesus presented. Amen and amen.